Hey guys, it's Kieran. I'm just going to do a quick full market update. So kicking it off with Bitcoin, we can see how we actually had this trend line here, this white trend line. We got that first touch point here, second one here and third one here. Very often when so many people are looking at the same thing, sometimes you get an overshoot like this. And this is what's happened. Too many people watching the same line and we just blasted straight past it. And this is why I always say in trading, never try and predict the price and never try to catch a falling knife. It's better to actually wait for a change in structure. And we can also see how we actually got that liquidity sweep, a nasty liquidity sweep of this the cluster of stop losses around here. So people just limiting in longs got, got completely wrecked. And this is what I mean. It's, we just, it's nothing like this happens by accident here, a move like this. So now we're essentially consolidating. From experience, based on many years of watching these markets, what I've noticed is that very often these consolidation ranges usually tend to last two to three weeks. And at the end of the three week period, for especially Bitcoin, you get a resolution. The bears have actually had ample opportunity to break down now. And of course, there is room to drop more, potentially to 23K. That's just an area that's, it's fairly, it's very possible. So what's interesting also is that if you draw a Fibonacci from the low of this bear market cycle so far, to the top of the high so far this year, the 0.5 Fibonacci is actually around 23.5K. So you might get a pullback to there. That is something I'm definitely looking at. There's no guarantees, of course. If we lose this low here, I mean, this is a wick, so I'm not gonna count it that confidently, but if we get like a four or close below here, we start breaking down with daily closes, then there's actually technically very little in the way till 20K, 21K, that's something to consider as well. Of course, nothing goes in a straight line. Will we bounces along the way? For an ideal trade, actually, what would be nice is waiting for a pullback to this previous support and test it as resistance. And if we get a rejection here, that could be a nice short setup. But from experience, these actual perfect SR flips don't happen. Sometimes what happens is when there's a breakdown like this, a lot of retail, so weaker traders tend to just catch falling knives. And so the market makers generally like to keep them as underwater for as long as possible. So yes, you've, we've got imbalances here. So what I mean by an imbalance is here, you can see how... We had this heavy selling here on high volume, but there's still an imbalance here. So we've got a wick here and a wick here. So there's a gap here, a fair value gap or imbalance, some people call it. So you might get a recovery of maybe half of that, and then we'll see if we fall back down. But nothing has really changed off of Bitcoin in the last couple of weeks. I mean, you can trade in this 50 minute range and try and trade the extremes of the range. A lot of you know in my, from the community that I prefer this false breakout style of trading for these ranges, but there are better assets to trade in my opinion. And this is the beauty of trading. You can trade in any asset you want. A lot of people are twiddling their thumbs over crypto, but we, I trade crypto, equities, forex, and commodities. So, because the skill is very much transferable. So, speaking of that, let's actually now look at the S and P 500 index. And so, looking at this, we can see how, particularly, we had this downtrend for a really, really long time here. So, clear downtrend here, and we can also check for certain key Fibonacci. So we can see how we actually pushed above this 200 EMA when we broke down. And the question now is, do we reject off this and then dump further? So this is just something else I'm looking at. And it seems to be some kind of V, v sort of W shape pattern here, but we'll just see if we clear out these highs. And Bitcoin is naturally taking a tumble. What I found is that is particularly is the NASDAQ, if you pay attention, it really gives clues to what Bitcoin is going to do next. And I see a lot of correlation between these two assets. And particularly here, this was a huge downtrend here. Then we had that pop up here and push down here. Question is, if asked down, NASDAQ pushes a bit further, we might get that nice pop in Bitcoin. And so this is just something else that I'm considering. But on the four here, it's a bit of a downtrend here. Then looking, of course, at some more setups, particularly gold is something that I actively trade, if you are aware from the community. So looking at gold, we had this clear downtrend here. And I actually explained in the Discord group particularly last week in the live streams, how very often you have this triple top like this. So you've got first touch point here from 2020, the next one here from 2022, and this is the third one. Very often these triple tops have less severe correction and we push back down here. And I actually expected how, whilst I'm not the biggest fan of trend lines, I actually expected a quick wick of this like sloping support line. We got the wick off. And so that's something to see. I, I don't, I think there could be actual potential for another high. Very often if we do get a push back up, the fourth or fifth attempt at the resistance generally breaks out, like usually statistically, right? So you might get a move up to 2.2K. I'm not ruling that out. It's just a question of when. Yeah, but the nice thing is that we don't need to wait for that. As traders, we can benefit even smaller timeframes. So we got, I actually caught this long and like a scalping one minute timeframe. 
So it's just nice to see that. I have planning on a short, but I haven't taken out yet. Then, of course, the oil chart as well. This worked out beautifully. So as many of you know, I actually limited in the short, but my order didn't fail in the, fail in the MT4 platform because of some, because there's a discrepancy between my entry price and just the broker spread difference. So it didn't fill. So it was annoying. But anyway, the, the trade actually worked out well because we had that push above this local resistance and they had a false breakup. And we moved back down into the range. And we see this time and time again in crypto and various commodities as well. But now this could be a potential short opportunity. It's a clear four hour downtrend and we've essentially reversed now into this clear area of supply here. So this, this, this green candle here is the preceding supply zone before this dump. So I, I marked this red box here. So once price goes in there, wait for change in structure. This could be a potential short opportunity as well. So I always like to plan things out in advance. And it's just another setup that I've highlighted to the group. What's also interesting is that looking at the Ethereum chart, Ethereum, another cryptocurrency, is not really holding up that well compared to Bitcoin. It actually looks a lot weaker, particularly, because we can see how particularly, you could argue this is actually some, it's funny, I was speaking to a friend and he was like, this is a head and shoulder pattern. So shoulder here, head, and then right shoulder here, like more of a macro one. So we've actually breached below it. So technically, if we do start closing here, there's actually very little on the way till 1350. But yeah, this chart does look a lot weaker than Bitcoin, I must say. And it's very important to, of course, look at Bitcoin dominance. Because what happened was here, so you can see here, we have this, so I've actually drawn this trend line here. And I've, I mean, not a lot has changed with, with my analysis, but this is a trend line I've drawn from a weekly chart. So you can see how the first touch point here, 95% was in 2017. Second touch point here. So I would expect to move actually up to here. So we're on 58% in the next couple of months. The question is that if you hold a lot of altcoins, yes, they might go up in dollar value, but they might not be gaining in terms of Bitcoin value. And this was nasty. We actually had a run up like this. So the question is, do we run up like this here again? So this is something else I'm looking at. And you always want to be careful. A lot of like money management firms and all going more into blue chips. Looking at some Forex pairs, we can see a lot of them are on a clear four or downtrend. And so it's just a case of waiting for a chain structure and essentially opening a long position at the right time. You, you don't want, it's better to actually trade with the trend, generally speaking, but this is a clear downtrend. These euro dollars, a lot of pairs are. Other Forex pairs actually include also the pound dollar. It's actually in a clear downtrend in the four. Hour. So it seems a similar pattern all across the board for these Forex pairs. This is a potential long setup that I'm looking at. So the US dollar Swiss franc, we've taken out this high. We've actually recovered a lot of these, particularly these imbalances over here. And so you, we've actually had a pretty much taken out structure. We pull, pull back and pushed above. So if we get a move actually back down to this like area of demand, this might be a nice long setup. So this is like the potential more bullish of the coins, I'd say for Forex, that is. And of course, we spoke a lot about this as well. So this was the Dixie, the US dollar index. And this was essentially we had this touch point here in the four hour second touch point here and third touch point here. We pushed down and then we broke above it. And now it seems like we're actually heading back to this 104 level. And it's not at all surprising. We spoke about it last week, how we actually found support around this support line. And we just thought if we bounced here like this, that could really hurt risk on assets like stocks and specifically Bitcoin. And that's what happened. We got this bounce in Dixie and Bitcoin seems to have slightly taken a dump here. So it's just all the things that I'm actually looking at in this chart so far. But guys, thanks a lot for watching. Do subscribe. And of course, please do leave any specific video requests in the comment section below and I'll really take a look at them.